Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking about uh, uh, on the topic resolution of corporate disputes, non compliances, and remedies. You all know this particular paper is in the professional program module 2, that is paper 6, which is called RCDNR. So, in this video, I will talk about uh, some of the important aspects. Let me start with, you know, what is this subject is all about? That is very important. This resolution of corporate disputes, non-compliances and remedies. These are the three parts which I can talk about when it comes to this particular subject. Please note in the profession of company secretary or if you take up any legal profession for that matter, the legal profession may be the practice perspective can be considered into three important uh, areas. One is advisory, the second one is compliances and the third one is litigation. So, if we are concentrating only on advisory and compliances related practice, then it is all straightforward in the sense what is written in the law we will follow and what is specified in the law we will apply our interpretation skills and whatever advice which we have to give to our clients we will do it as in the form of written opinions or it might be structuring related decisions or anything. Please note corporate form of organization is kindly not, you know, basically it is not free from litigations. Even in corporate era, there are a lot of litigations takes place. If you remember, you know, the Cyrus Mysteries, uh, you know, incident when it comes to the Tata sense that became a very popular, you know, basically like when it comes to the corporate disputes and then, you know, he was removed as the chairman from the, you know, Tata group of companies. These are a lot of examples that you will see when it comes to the corporate disputes. So, if anyone is interested to understand what are the kinds of disputes which may arise when it comes to the corporate law, this is the subject which gives the glimpses about how to solve the disputes, what are the kinds of corporate disputes and what is the actions which are required to be taken and followed by if there are any non-compliances, if there are any disputes, then what are the remedies which are available in the entire gamut of corporate laws. That is what this subject is all about. Now, how is it important to the profession of company secretary? Why this particular subject is included in our syllabus? Kindly note, our profession is growing day by day. There are a lot of scope which is widening. The scope of company secretaries are not only limited to compliances, we are no more compliance officers, we are governance professionals. In addition to governance, we are advisors to the corporate uh, field wherein the board of directors will listen to us and then we have to advise them with respect to how this particular entire non-compliances would result in the loss of reputation to an organization. So, there are so many aspects which is involved. It is not only just non-compliances, the non-compliances or corporate disputes, if it happens in a reputed organization, definitely, you know, it is going to be either a harm to the reputation of that particular company or it will be, you know, basically it might work out to be in an advantageous way also. Anything can happen, but maintaining the reputation of the company in the eyes of the public is very, very important. So, we being company secretaries, it is really important to know what are the forms of corporate disputes. So, if you are working for an organization where there is a elements of dispute, we need to propose how to bring in a resolution to that particular dispute. If there are any potential non-compliances, we need to identify and specify how those non-compliances has to be addressed. And if that particular non-compliances are not taken care of, then what are the implications on the company? Even that particular aspect has to be very clearly mentioned. So, it is the role of the company secretary and if you take up being a practicing company secretary, litigation as your specialization, if you want to appear before national company law tribunal, then under those circumstances, you should be thoroughly aware of how this particular non-compliances can be resolved, how this corporate disputes can be addressed to. So, it is very important for the career as well as, you know, if you want to take up the profession as company secretary, that is the reason why they have included this particular subject in the syllabus, that is resolution of corporate disputes, non-compliances and remedies, shortly RCDNR. The next important topic, what is the syllabus is all about? Very important. 
it is not like very huge things are being incorporated here i think this is the shortest syllabus i should say you have only 10 chapters in this particular subject where for the entire 100 marks you won't, you won't find parts like part a part b or part c the entire 100 marks since it is only 10 chapters we need to specifically look into you have 10 chapters the chapter starts with the shareholders democracy and the rights and then it ends with the crisis management okay let me take you people briefly through what each chapter talks about or how the flow of things are there okay so if you look at shareholders democracy the shareholders democracy is nothing but you know you all know democracy is by the people for the people and to the people that is what is the simplest form of definition of a shareholders democracy or a general democracy you will see but when it comes to shareholders democracy we are not talking about in the context of a country we are talking about in the context of a company when we have to talk about in the context of a company since the shareholders are the people who would have started the organization it is really important that it is by the shareholders to the shareholders and for the shareholders that is what is the democracy principle is all about how to protect the interest of shareholders how to protect the interest of stakeholders what are the powers of the majority shareholders and how the minority shareholders are protected what are the provisions of companies act which speaks about minority protection and if there are any oppression and mismanagement is happening kindly note the next important topic that is corporate disputes in which one important a type of corporate dispute which we are going to discuss is oppression and mismanagement. Oppression is majority of shareholders are taking decisions which is oppressive to the minority shareholders. Take for example, the shareholding is automatically getting diluted. The minority shares interest as well as concerns are not at all listened to. The majority shareholders are taking decisions just like that without even consulting the minority shareholders. If you people know, you have ordinary resolutions and special resolutions. Ordinary resolution is the, the simple majority, 51% is more than sufficient. Special majority or special resolution is 51% in number representing 75% of the value of the shares. These people have to attend. So under those circumstances, uh, what happens is like if majority shareholders say 75% of the shareholders forms the group then without consulting the minority shareholders, they can take the decision on their own. So if it is affecting the minority shareholders and automatically there is a continuous act of operation is happening where the minority shareholders are ignored, then what actions the minority shareholders can take against the company as well as the oppressive shareholders or the oppressive majority shareholders. So this is what we are going to discuss in chapter 1 and 2, understanding how the whole gamut of corporate disputes can come into picture. The same way there might be a deadlock in the management where two people are there who are shareholders as well as directors and they those two fall under dispute or there is a quarrel between them. Under those circumstances, how to resolve that particular dispute? There is a complete deadlock in the management. The company is functioning so well, there are so many number of employees, the business is so good. Because of the dispute between the shareholders and board of directors, they are not able to run the company, they are not able to pass any resolutions. So these are the circumstances which needs to be very carefully addressed, not only taking into consideration the interest of the shareholders, the promoters, the directors of the company, even the employees, the outsiders, the debtors, the creditors, entire stakeholders interest has to be taken into consideration while deciding a corporate dispute. So this is about the kind of disputes which may arise between the company, the shareholders, the directors and all that, which we are going to discuss in chapter 1 and 2. When it comes to chapter 3, we need to understand how frauds can happen in a company. Please note you will see every day news and then the recent one is the collocation scam which has happened in National Stock Exchange. 
So what happened related to the co-location scam? How the people involved in the uh, server maintenance room till the managing director, you know, how exactly the people involved over there are being booked for the offense involved in the fraud. Starting from the Satyam instance, that is with respect to Ramalinga Raju and like that, you know, there are various instances of corporate frauds which is going to happen or which has happened in this corporate world. So what is fraud? What are the elements of fraud? And is there any distinction between the fraud as specified under Companies Act and the fraud as specified under Indian Penal Code? Because it is going to be a criminal offense. So how to treat this particular matter and how this particular offenses has to be addressed to? So it is very, very important. So fraud under Companies Act versus Indian Penal Code is one of the important topic to be discussion in under Chapter 3 because that is also one of the important scams or frauds which going to happen or which may have happened in a company which will be taken into consideration. Next important thing is misrepresentation and malpractices in an organization. Generally, we call it scams. Like take for example, under Companies Act it might be or even under Reserve Bank of India, the labor laws, the money laundering related practices. Fake NGOs you would have floated, directors would have floated fake NGOs for conducting the uh, money laundering related activities, for conducting terrorist financing related activities and certain properties they would have withheld in their name but it was supposed to be registered in the name of the company. Like that various malpractices can happen in a company which I gave you one or two examples but if you look at misrepresentation and malpractices if directors involve then what is the impact of it we need to necessarily understand so to understand those things we need to necessarily understand the what are the instances of mispractices or uh, malpractices or misrepresentations according to various corporate legislations it might be companies act rbi or sebi anything for that matter the fifth important uh, type of uh, activity which we are going to see in the corporate world on the resolution of dispute front or corporate litigations front is regulatory actions. Okay, how the regulatory actions start? Generally, in the corporate world, they will go. Uh, the company has received a love letter. What is this love letter? Means it is a show cost notice. Okay, that is how the people will call. Because if there are any potential non-compliances, why have you not done this? Why should I not take action against you? Like that, first they will send notice to the company. So the notice of that kind may come from Registrar of Companies, Reserve Bank of India, Securities and Exchange Board of India, IRDAI. Like that, there are various sectoral regulators whom they can take action against the company. When such an action is taken against the company, how the company secretary should be prepared to address that? You know, how to respond to show cost notices? And when the show cost notice has come, when the appearances before the regulatory authorities are required, how the appearances has to take place? What are the etiquettes which are required to be followed? How the preparedness of the company secretary should be? That is what chapter 5 is all about relating to addressing or involvement of company secretary during the process of regulatory actions. Regulatory actions may be of any types. It might be just replying to the notice of the show cost notice or it might be even enquiries, investigations, inspections, search and seizure or even it may go till the point of arrest. How to take a bail? What is the difference between anticipatory bail and just bail? Like that, there are various instances where we need to advise the directors. If there is potential non-compliances which may result in arrest of a director, we being company secretary, should we, should, we should have advised them in taking anticipatory bail. So when they should take, how the fundamentals of criminal law has to be followed. All that is an important point to be discussed in chapter number 5. Next chapter talks about the adjudication process for the defaults of compliances under various corporate laws or any other law for that matter, how the adjudication has to happen or prosecution, how it is going to happen and how the penalties will be levied under the Companies Act or whatever. What are the proactiveness? Adjudication is the adjudicating officers will do their part of law by Looking at the records of the company, whether it might be after inspection or it might be after inquiry or after investigation, they will come to the conclusion whether there is a potential non-compliance or not. 
once they come to the conclusion if there is potential non compliance finally they may levy penalty or they may initiate prosecution if they want to imprison a particular director or take a person into custody under those circumstances the only way out is to institute a prosecution obtain an arrest warrant and you know start the procedure to take him to the custody so prosecution may start or they may levy the penalty how the penalty can be levied now at the same time the companies need not wait till uh, the prosecution order or adjudication order they can do it voluntarily voluntary adjudication they can do voluntary compounding they can do like that there are various instances where compounding of offenses adjudication everything is applicable okay so next is what types of fines penalties and punishments are available under various laws because company secretary should be aware and then we will be advising the board of directors on this particular aspect so it is very very important so that is chapter 7 which talks about the table or the tabular format in which they would have given punishments how the punishments will be given kindly note if the punishments are in the form of fine then if you want to come out of that particular non compliance then for fine it is only compounding if the penalty is by way of you know basically with respect to what is the wordings which is being used is not fine if they have used the terminology it is penalty then under those circumstances it is adjudication like that we need to identify regarding what is the punishment and then very very important that if a civil case is filed against the company how the civil trial is going to happen if a criminal prosecution has been initiated against the director or against the company then how the criminal trial is going to happen so point uh, the lesson number 8 is all about civil trial versus criminal trial so we should be very well aware because we will be the people who are involved in the entire trial processes so company secretaries has to you know uh, join hands with the board of directors uh, with respect to the civil as well as criminal trial so we should be completely aware of how the civil trial is going to happen and how the criminal trial is going to happen that is all about chapter 8 now coming to chapter 9 here we talk about what are the reliefs and remedies available very very important our job is not limited to identifying problems we are the people have to identify the problem as well as provide solution so if there is any non compliances if there are any instances of disputes how the relief is available what and all resolution which can happen what are the remedies available that is very important point which has to be looked into okay so compounding of offenses mediation and conciliation that is alternate ways of dispute resolution and then you know how to go appear before securities appellate tribunal or national company law tribunal or national company law appellate tribunal it might be enforcement directorate or competition commission of india anywhere whether we go for voluntary adjudication or compounding processes how to come out of those non compliances how to address those show cause notices the relief and remedies is chapter number 9 and the last chapter is relating to crisis management and professional ethics professional ethics is followed by professional liability so i being a company secretary of that organization if the authorities levy any fine or penalty then how do i pay it is not my mistake is there any insurance facility available there is something called directors and officers liability insurance whether the company has taken it whether the directors has taken it so like that you know basically crisis management just like that if there are any crisis situation happens what is that crisis situation like the instances where penalties are required to be paid are we prepared for that have we done provisions associated to that that is what crisis management professional liability and related aspects okay so this is the brief syllabus 10 chapters very interesting and then you know the other side of the corporate law you will be able to study in this particular aspect and then based on this if you people are interested this particular line of practice also can be chosen post completing this particular course now how whether case laws are important for this particular subject if you ask me a question 100% yes because to understand operation and mismanagement you will not find specific definitions in the act we have to depend on the cases coming to the conclusion whether it is operation or mismanagement we have to study cases 
So, case laws are very, very important in this particular subject and, uh, uh, you know, basically it is the expectation from the institute also. So, what is expected from the Institute of Company Secretaries of India is, if you look at and if you open the study material, it is very clearly written that the expectation of the institute is a very student of professional program. He should have the knowledge of various kinds of corporate disputes and non-compliances under various laws and their resolution and management. So, he should have the knowledge, not thorough or, you know, basically not complete expert knowledge. Just a working knowledge is sufficient. Theoretically, if you are aware that what are the uh, disputes and what are the ways in which the resolution can be achieved, when you are actually put on job, you will be ready for that. So that where to look for, you will know. That is the expectation of the institute. Now, what is like, you know, what is the approach? How a student should approach this particular subject? Kindly note, it is very important. One of the important approaches is try to understand conceptually operation and mismanagement. Conceptual clarity is very, very important. Put your effort for conceptually understanding the differences between all this, like compounding versus adjudication, what is the difference? Uh, operation versus mismanagement, what is the difference? Class action suits means what? And then what are the instances where minority shareholders can take action against the majority shareholders? Subject matter clarity or conceptual clarity is very, very important. So, procedure is fine, but what is most important approach towards understanding this particular subject should be conceptual clarity. So, for putting that conceptual clarity, you need to really read the material thoroughly and understand, not just mugging up or something like that will not help you. Conceptual clarity is the key to address this particular paper. If you are aware of the concepts, then you can write the answers in the examination. Okay, that is how the flow of pattern will work. And then this particular subject is simple. It is not like it is very difficult. But if you have a very good, uh, you know, basically a mentor or if you find particular person who is having a practical knowledge of all this, the way how you will receive the explanation as well as the conceptual clarity will be really good. This should be the approach for resolution of corporate disputes, non-compliances and remedies. If you are interested to join the classes for professional program at our academy, or if you need help in this particular subject, please contact the number which is being displayed on the screen so that we will be able to assist you in this. Thank you.